VC. How are we? Thanks for tuning in again. Um, it's been a little while. Um, been a bit under the weather. Had a bit of well, had a, some man flu, which is obviously a critical illness. So just got through that. Still a bit croaky. Um, yeah, just been busy and just haven't had the bubble boom for a video. But um, got my voice back now, and yeah, thought about time I'd get back on your set top box. Um, hope everybody is well. Um, so just a quick little update. Um, maybe less than ten albums. But um, what I picked up probably the last few weeks, just want to update them and show you so I can file them away. And there's some great stuff in here. Really happy with a lot of this stuff. So, um, <clears throat> first, these first few, three, were, as I was going to this record store, um, I was thinking, when am I going to find some albums by this band? Um, I've heard about it through the VC. Um, got introduced by the VC um, and walk in and there's four of their albums on the shelf and the band is Budgie oh, awesome um, this is you know, right up my alley just hard rock but also it's probably progressive in nature really but it's got periods of really hard rock um, so I just changed my vest vista around today so if you clipped all my videos together you'd probably get a whole 360 degree view of the garage um, anyway so probably pr progressive but it also got as I say some really hard heavy riffs great bass drums the whole instruments on this this three-piece band is great um, but also some sort of folky psychedelic sort of stuff and great stuff this so there was four albums on the shelf, they were $20 each. I couldn't pick them all up, so I picked two. Um, and this one's called Never Turn Your Back on a Friend. Great title. And the cover is obviously amazing. Um, just that sort of landscapey, dreamy, fantasy sort of thing. It's Roger Dean cover. I thought it was um, Hypnosis, but Roger Dean. Who <clears throat> she actually worked with um, Storm from Hypnosis, and they couldn't, they didn't produce anything good apparently. So maybe they're just too similar. But um, Budgie, this is the band. So you got. Let's see if I can show you their focuses. Not on my head, but on the band. Hopefully, we're the members. Here we go. So um, Brooke Shelley on bass and vocals. Tony Borge on lead guitar. And vocals and Ray Phillips on drums. Um, great stuff, doesn't that look like Ted Nugent? <laughs> um, everything, all the instruments in this are awesome. Great drumming. There's a great, great drum solo on side one. Um, song titles there. Actually, Metallica did a cover of Bread Fan. I think that sort of gave a bit, um, bit more exposure to Budgie. They're a Welsh band, um, so maybe. From Dr. Dr. Um, James Griffith's Neck of the Woods. Um, and talk about great album title, but listen to some of these song titles. Um, You're the biggest thing since Powdered Milk. That's big. And what about this one? In the grip of a tire fitter's hand. As I say, love it. Um, great stuff. This was 73, I think. Um, in the Rainbow. Um, awesome. So I picked up that one and I just picked up one that I probably hadn't seen before from Budgie. I've seen a few of them shown and went with this one here, Budgie. This one's got a cool title to it. They've got good, good titles for albums and songs. If I were Britannia, I'd waive the rules. With their famous Budgie on there. You know, who would have thought Budgie <coughs> would be such a dominant figure? Um, this is cool. This was 78 or 76. Um, maybe a little bit different. Um, just on my head. maybe a little bit more progressive, but don't quote me. And the song on this, The Quactors and Bureaucrats. So track four, side one, Quactors and Bureaucrats. Go pause this now and play that. Great bass and just great song and really cool album. This is on the A&M label. 
which I'm reading a bit more now, didn't <clears throat> do great things for their artists. And apparently that's why maybe they weren't so um, famous, Budgie, because A&M didn't really promote them very well. And something else I got from that store, classic Thin Lizzy Jailbreak. So, didn't have this, I've never actually heard this. So, super stuff, not a gatefold, but um, yeah, so, classic album. I'm sure everybody knows it. Um, classic songs, so super happy to get my first Thin Lizzy in my collection. And then I went to my local record store, picked up a couple things. Um, cheers, everybody. Bit of Crown Lager, aka Crowny. I think it's actually brewed the same way Foster's is brewed, but just a slight variation with an extra limb of something, which is good because Foster's is crap. Probably our most famous beer, but nobody drinks it. <laughs> okay classic. I've actually been after this for a while and haven't been able to find it. <clears throat> One of the biggest albums of the 80s and of all time. I just had a little read before I come on here. and One of the first albums, I think it's got six um, number five, top five hits on it. And the, obviously the first three, the three biggest. Just great tracks. Great 80s. And this is a classic 80s album. Um... All of George Michael's solo albums hit number one in the UKs. He had four solos, and this is probably his biggest. And ah, I think a must for my collection. And this is something else I've been after for a while. Um, see people shown it, um, and just never been able to find it. So, <coughs> excuse me. Warren Zevon, Zevon, um, Excitable Boy. You know, obviously the biggest hit is Werewolves of London, but I have heard people say that there's a lot of great other songs on this, and there is um, a lot of really cool songs on this. Interesting um, <coughs> lyrics, great musicianship. He, I didn't realise he, he plays piano. And on Werewolves of London, Mick Fleetwood, Mick, Mick Fleetwood is on drums. I like it when they list the songs in all the... Uh, the musicians on each of the individual songs, so yeah, very happy to get Excitable Boy. Made me Excitable Boy, and th then I realised the lyrics of Excitable Boy is not very a bit dark, so I don't associate myself with that. And then the other day, I had a chance to go to a different record store and picked up a few things, a few all Aussie actually. The Party Boys, um, it's for a tenor. This, um, this is. <laughs> A super group, but a massively swinging super group. Um, not for those sort of reasons, because there was multiple, multiple members. I think 20 or 30 members. And actually, Eric Burton um, from The Animals actually featured for a year with these guys. Though they did say that these guys were his backing group. Um, James, let me tell you, it's just um, it's a live album. They got together, they just wanted to get together and they managed to pull it off. So there's an, uh, I hope you can read that. So Graham Biztrop from The Angels. You got Kevin Borsch, who was on that La Da Da's album. Um, he's a very famous um, Australian guitarist who I'm learning more about. And he's amazing. He, he jammed with Santana and lots of great people and very talented. Kevin Borsch is a really great guitarist here. You got uh, Paul Christie, ex Mondo Rock. You've got... Um, Harry James from Sherbert um, and Richard Clapton. And you've got James Rain, the Australian Crawl singer, who I haven't mentioned Australian Crawl much, and not many other, other Aussie folks have. A great Aussie band, who I'll talk about one day. But he was actually doing like a TV series at the time and just popped in for a while, and they did a, did a gig, and it's called Live at Several 21st. Happy with that. Another Aussie that was in uh, Mondo Rock and Daddy Cool, Ross Wilson, who went solo. This is so-so, but I'll give that a more spin. And, excuse me, and one of my favorite picks up, pickups of these um, stash is Paul Kelly and the Messengers. Um, I went into this record store. I haven't actually seen any Paul Kelly albums, maybe the latest one, um, his solo. 
um, on vinyl at all and there was about five or six of them all reissues so I had to really decide which one I um, was going to pick up it's, it's a new one it was $35 so it's getting the top of my budget um, this was actually it's two LP set um, this was his later stuff so in 90s um, and I chose that because I actually prefer Paul Kelly's 80s sort of stuff but um and but I thought I didn't really know any of these songs um so I thought well might one or two but yeah I just thought I'd give that a go and it's a beautiful listen really nice on this uh haven't seen this label before Gorn Ugg label really nicely done um so yeah I don't know Paul Kelly he is one of the forefront of our singer-songwriters in Australian history. Just amazing singer-songwriter. Talented. He was in the band. Before they were called Messengers, they were called The Colour Girls. But then when they were going to the States, they thought it might cause some racial tensions. So they changed it to Messengers. They were, they were called Paul Kelly and the, and the Dots as well at, at a certain time. Maybe another name as well. Just, he's a storyteller. He, all his songs tell stories. And a lot of about Australian life. A great singer-songwriter. Look up Paul Kelly if you're into singer-songwriter stuff. He is great. And so really happy with this. Um, I'd probably start with his earlier stuff in his 80s. Got some great tracks on there. All right, VC. Hope everybody's well. Um, thanks for tuning in and watching. Any comments is muchly appreciated. Hope everybody's doing well. Look after yourselves.